Although, if I may speak plainly, I must confess that I did not anticipate we would have the occasion to meet again after presenting you with the Gnosis. I see you brought the Traveler and Paimon with you as well. If I may inquire as to the purpose of your visit. Hmm. I understand your request. However, at the risk of causing offense, I must admit that I fail to see why you would wish for such a thing. I heard you have a certain fondness for water tasting, Monsieur Nervalet. So allow me to use water as an analogy. Destination. Like a field in need of irrigation. Or perhaps, the glass of a certain water-tasting enthusiast. Um, did you get any of that, Traveler? Your words paint an optimistic picture indeed. Allow me to remind you, however, few among us are willing to sip from a glass filled with tainted water. Expound on that? If you accept my proposal, Monsieur Nivellet, I will gradually withdraw my forces from Fontaine. And, unless absolutely necessary, I will no longer carry out any special missions within Fontaine. I presume I can take your words to mean that, in the future, cases similar to the Tartuffe assassination will cease to cross my desk? Sing. Of course, if you accept my proposal, Monsieur Nervalet, I'm sure certain measures could be taken to reduce the frequency of such troubles. You choose your words carefully, indeed. In that case, I am inclined to accept your proposal. Might settled. We should be going now. I took the liberty of bringing along two bottles of spring water from Snezhnaya for you to enjoy. I do hope I get the chance to hear your impressions. Perhaps at our next meeting, yes? Indeed. I trust you would not overlook your commitment in the meantime. I've told you before that my emotions easily resonate with those of others. Yet in the few meetings I have had with that Harbinger, I haven't been able to sense any aspect of her emotional state. Jewel. I do not expect an explanation as to why you two are by her side. Whatever your reasoning, I would only advise you to take caution. Uh, Paimon just realized how hungry she is! She can't head back to Poisson on an empty stomach! It appears you two are under the impression that delaying our return will somehow alter the situation in your favor. I'm sorry to ruin your fantasy, but your efforts are meaningless. That's some of your questions. You're quite curious about Claire V, are you not? And my relationship to her. Wait, why are you being so generous all of a sudden? You're not gonna ask us to do something bad, are you? You overestimate yourself. You don't have the talent for bad things. Uh, then what can you possibly... The most important consideration in a negotiation is that both sides receive something they want. Tell you. It was before I became a harbinger, and before Linny and the others joined the House of the Hearth. Due to certain events, I first killed Clairvy and then her mother. And this is where it all happened. You were the one that killed Clairvy? Clairvy was six years old when she was brought by her mother, Crucibina, to live in the House of the Hearth. From the outside, it seemed like a fairy tale. Crucibina was the knave at that time, and the House of the Hearth was under her control. But she quickly realized that being part of this family wasn't a fairy tale at all. It was a kind of purgatory. And, well... They still served a purpose. They would be handed over to the Doctor to be experimented on, or sent away on dangerous missions. Nothing more than tools to be used and then discarded. Of course, there was one exception. Someone Clairvy's age who knew the truth about the House of the Hearth. Her name was Perouere. Clairvy was a cheerful and passionate person with a tenacious spirit. Perouere, on the other hand, was rather cold-blooded. Success. Clairvy never gave another reason, but Perouere could see it written all over her face. Clairvy still thought of Crucibina as her mother. Killing her own flesh and blood was a line she couldn't bring herself to cross. If she couldn't escape and fight back, then only one option remained. 
It happened during a duel. When she arrived at the dueling ring that day, her partner turned out to be none other than Peruere. The very person that had stood by her side all those years. It was a fierce battle. But ultimately, Clairvy decided to let Peru wear end her life. Correct. This is the place where Peru wear killed her best friend. A mere year later, this is also the place where she fought tooth and nail to kill the mother they shared. Peru wear won the battle and became a harbinger herself. After which her majesty, the Tsaritsa, bestowed upon her a new name. Arlecchino. So the Perry Clairvy was talking about... It was you all along. Your Perrywear. After I defeated Crucibina, the moniker of Mother died with her. I chose to forego the title she called herself and even chose to give up my own name. I rebuilt the House of the Hearth under a new identity. Not only as Arlecchino, but as father. I suppose you could call her an illusion born of flame. Her existence is like ashes to a fire. Something left over in the wake of blaze and ruin. You see, a certain power runs through my veins. It's not unlike a curse. My flames leave behind shadows of anything they consume. Of course, the chances of those shadows morphing into a sentient entity are exceedingly slim. Claire V is a very special case. Claire V died when she was 16 years old, but what emerged from the flames was her six-year-old self. Her appearance wasn't the only thing affected. Most of her memories were lost to the blaze as well. But, no matter. All I have to do is kill her again, and all will be resolved. I don't anticipate so much as a single speck of ash will be left behind this time. Wait! Paimon can understand why you might want her gone, but isn't there another way? Is this really what you want to do? Whatever could you mean? Don't you want to say a proper goodbye at least? Whether as a killer or as a father, there are two things that must be avoided at all costs. Anger and sorrow. Anger makes you impulsive. Sorrow causes you to waver. Her wish. Huh? Are you... Perry? Indeed. It's been a while, Clairvy. Perry! Shh. Stay right there. I'm sorry to postpone our reunion, but first, I believe certain scores need settling. Person. Filial was the worst of them all. She called us crazies and said a bunch of mean things about father. I did not! You're... you're lying! Fultz is trying to frame us! It's not like I'm the only one who heard those things. After that, you and Toddy and a bunch of other people started talking about Claire V. You were using all those things Clairvy brought up as an excuse to question father. We're birds locked in a cage. The only way out is to destroy it. That's what you said, wasn't it? You little. You just want me gone, don't you? What did I ever do to you, huh? And you, Shaplo, have you forgotten who stood by your sickbed, watched over you, and changed your dressings? My hands are tied. Why? <laughs> Why? That's enough, Filial. We made a mistake. And we should own up to it. We broke the rules. Plain and simple. And now we have to face the consequences. All those who betray the house pay with their lives. And so it shall be.